to Somalia, where at least 22 people have been killed when suicide attackers set off two car bombs in the capital, Mogadishu. The attackers struck outside a hotel near the country's criminal investigations department. Minutes after the first two blasts, another explosion hit the area. Security forces say officers and guards from nearby hotels opened fire after the blasts. Al-Shabaab has claimed responsibility for the attack. Let's get more on this. Dan Joseph is the co-author of Inside Al-Shabaab. He joins me now from Washington, D.C. Uh, many thanks for speaking to us on TRT World, Dan. Uh, what do you make of this escalation in violence that we're seeing in Mogadishu? Well, when al-Shabaab uh, carries out attacks in Mogadishu, what they're usually trying to do is disrupt any sense of stability or safety or normalcy that the Somali government is trying to provide. Uh, usually they attack a government uh, facility or you know, a place where government officials gather, such as hotels or restaurants, and that I believe that's what they were trying to do today as well. Uh, to, you know, they, they don't want the populace to start thinking that uh, normalcy is, is returning to the Somali capital after so many years. And you, and you know this happened on a day when Ethiopian Airlines resumed service to Mogadishu for the first time in 41 years since the uh, 1977 Somali-Ethiopian War. So they, they, are, uh, they don't want the Somali government to get its feet on the ground, so mm. to speak. That's very interesting, um, because to, to the outside view, at least, someone who doesn't look at Somalia that closely, it, it looks like despite years of uh, international assistance around counterterrorism, counterinsurgency, Al-Shabaab seemed to be showing no sign of uh, diminishing in strength. I mean, is that fair? And if that's the case, why is that? Al-Shabaab's strength has, has waxed and waned over the years. Uh, part of the reason they look so strong is because the government is so weak. Uh, the government for years has been trying to get security forces, an army and a police force that are strong enough, organized enough, uh, equipped enough, and unified enough to take on Al-Shabaab effectively. And they've never been able to do that uh, due to uh, clan rivalries in Somalia, lack of funding, uh, lack of a unified government. The Somali government uh, usually is racked with corruption and, and again, clan rivalries, and so they don't um, get together an effective force. Shabab does maintain strength, uh, however. They do, they are effective at forcibly recruiting young men from the uh, Somali countryside. Now, I, I say young men, but often it's more like boys in the uh, 13, 14, 15-year-old range. And they, uh, they tax Somali businessmen to get funding. Uh, they are invo involved in the charcoal trade. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a combination of both things. Uh, I don't see right now a Shabab going away, however. They are strong enough to keep putting a lot of pressure on the Somali government. If it wasn't for the presence of Amazon, the African Union mission there, they would probably sweep away the Somali government in a, I don't want, I don't want to say how long, but I think they would be able to sweep away the Somali government. Well, given, given everything you've just said, I mean, how, <clears throat> what, what does the future look like for Somalia? I mean, there have been signs of hope. There have been signs of a little bit of economic progress. A lot of people uh, from the diaspora returning back home. Are you hopeful for its future? I'm sorry, could you repeat the last part again? Are you, are you, what, what, what does the future look like uh, for Somalia? Are you hopeful for its future? I'd like to be hopeful. Um, cautiously hopeful, perhaps, uh, but right now there's not a whole lot of progress toward giving Somalis a stable government or just living in a safe and stable society. Uh, there are a lot of countries, including Turkey, that are trying to train the Somali troops uh, to secure the country. Um, sometimes those 
countries, the African countries, the United States, Turkey, they're not always working together. Uh, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres mentioned that at a uh, conference uh, on Somalia last year. Um, if the Somalis can somehow overcome their own internal rivalries and um, build an effective army, effective police forces against to fight off al-Shabaab, then there is hope because I think, as you mentioned, there are, there are a lot of Somalis that have returned from the diaspora. They would like to build a, a prosperous and successful society, uh, but there is still a lot that they have to overcome. Dan Joseph, uh, joining us from Washington, D.C., co-author of Inside Al-Shabaab. Al Interesting to talk to you. Thank you.